And we are live. Mark Diver, Evan Marinovsky. It is a live Bruins beat today. You're you look comfy as heck, as you always do. I, I I'm yep. jealous of that. I'll be honest. I've, I've been um, sitting I've been sitting in this recliner for hours watching the uh, trade <laughs> deadline coverage. So yeah, I'm very comfortable. I dozed off a while an hour or so ago. Got a you know 15 minute nap in, so I should be good to go. Lucky you. I wish I could say the same. I, I, I'm actually, I, I'm not, I'm without a car. So I've been, cause I, I traded mine in or I'm buying out my lease, whatever. People don't care yeah. about that. I've been going between places. Uh, trade deadline just ended three o'clock trade deadline is over. Um, curious to see what other moves come in. I mean, we just saw, um, right at like two 59, um, Bob McKenzie reported that, uh, Tomas hurdle to Vegas is in the works, which is, a blockbuster deal. Uh, very curious to see what the return is on that because that is, that's quite big. It was literally like right before we came on. Um, again, we don't know what's coming back in that. Uh, but again, this is Bruins. We've got to focus on the Bruins, what the Bruins did in this deadline. There still could be some moves, whether it be moving people to LTIR like a Derek Forbert uh, and freeing up that cap space. But uh, so far, again, Bruins have made two moves today. They acquired Pat Maroon for a uh, for a conditional sixth round pick, and they acquired uh, Andrew Peak in the last hour from Columbus. Um, I think people are much more acquainted with Pat Maroon than they are Andrew Peak. Um, Andrew Peak, uh, just for those who don't know, for those who are just joining, uh, second round pick in 2016. He's 25 years old. Uh, they traded um, for Peak. Uh, they've traded Jakob Zborl, who's been stuck in Providence for quite a while. Uh, and a 2027 third rounder um, peak will carry a $2.75 million average annual value the next two years, 6'3", 196 pounds. Got to thank Ty Anderson for this stat. Uh, ranked sixth in blocks per 60 uh, over the last three seasons and 35th in hits per 60. So he does like to throw the body around, not afraid to uh, block some shots. Um, we'll start with what they did do, and then we'll get to what they didn't do. So we'll do two parts here. Um, what is your initial reaction to Pat Maroon and Andrew Peake? Well, we talked about this last week, I think, that, uh, you know, if they if a big deal didn't get done, a, a DeBrusque deal or a goalie deal or something along those lines, they'd probably make some some uh, changes around the, uh, around the edges, uh, and I think that's what they did. Uh, I don't, you know, Maroon and, and Peak uh, are not, nobody would describe them as impact additions. They're guys that shore up areas uh, of need, theoretically. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I like the, uh, I, I like the Maroon uh, deal. Um, I don't know if you were with me, Evan, at the Labor Day tournament last uh, September in Marlboro. I probably was. <laughs> Where and there's uh, you know, Pat Maroon living his best life, uh, killing uh, or, or crushing Bud Lights uh, up there with the other hockey dads at Marble. I, I did see this. I remember okay. this well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hey, you know, he's a man of the people, right? He's a man of the people. He's approachable. In fact, he, er, all indications are he's a great guy. Everybody, I've yes. never heard anyone say he's not. So uh, there's that. Uh, but yeah, you know, what does he have left in the tank? He's, he's injured right now. He'll be back soon. Uh, you know, it gives them someone to, uh, you know, keep the flies off some of the other guys. Uh, if he was there last night, you could have sent him out there and, you know, maybe some of that nonsense doesn't happen. Uh, and obviously he's a winner now. Uh, the Bruins uh, room is renowned for being, uh, you know, the culture is second to none. Uh, you know, I don't know where the culture was last April when they were uh, losing in the first round after a historic, uh, you know, season. But, hey, that's a that's a discussion for another time. We've uh, discussed that <laughs> quite discussed a bit. That. Uh, so I like the Maroon ad. I, I don't think, uh, you know, what they give up. They gave up uh, – Luke Toporowski. And a, oh, yeah. And I didn't Luke even Stalin. see the Luke Toporowski. Yeah. For yeah. A, yeah. Toporowski and a conditional sixth. 
And uh, Maroon just had back surgery, so he will not be yeah. ready to play until end of March. And as much as I'm, I'm sorry to see uh, Topper go because he's a fantastic kid. And uh, as I said on Twitter, he gave me a great pizza, local pizza recommendation uh, recently, Pizza Marvin in Providence. So, you know, thanks to Topper for that. Uh, I think uh, this, um, hey, it's a fresh start for him. It's an opportunity with another organization. So good, good luck to him. Uh, but, you know, we'll see how soon Mar Maroon can play. And, you know, I got to assume that the Bruins did their due diligence on his medical condition that uh, I would hope, you know, yeah, he, he's not. And also that, you know, while he's re rehabbing this back injury that he didn't like gain 20 pounds, you know, not to, uh, Okay, Jack Edwards. All right, yeah, Jack. Right. Right. Uh, I, right. I should just shut up about that along that line of uh, investigation. They got to get Maroon in the booth with Jack. They They've got to do it because that that could work. I think that dynamic they can they can uh, put everything to rest, and those two would be electric together. That was my main takeaway from that trade. Well, wouldn't he be better on those Sal's Pizza commercials than that than Sal, the guy that or than Berg know, or than Bergeron? Or then Bergeron, who definitely well, yeah, that's right. Eat much sells pizza. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not eat yeah. much sells pizza. Um, my big takeaway from all this, and I said this to you before we came on, is uh, there were lots of rumors surrounding the Bruins over the last couple of days, right? Olmark, we'll get to that. <coughs> Elias Lindholm, we'll get to that. Um, they went the bigger, heavier depth route. Um, clearly, they felt they didn't have the assets to compete for Jake Gensel or Lindholm or um, Toffoli, or a lot of these people, Hannafin, clearly. Um, and we'll get to him in a bit. Um, instead, they go the route of Pat Maroon, who, when he comes in, is going to fight for a spot on the fourth line. He's going to be a culture addition to the locker room. Um, and I'm fine with that. It fills a need. I know people are coming at me being like, that's not a need. No, it, that is a need. You need a guy like that on the fourth line. Lucic was supposed to be that. Obviously, things didn't work out. Maroon's going to take that. And he's won three cups. So, again, I think there is value to what Maroon brings, whether he's uh, playing a lot or not. Well, I mean, I think I'd rather him not playing a ton, but yeah. playing, you know, physical seven minutes. Seven minutes a night will be fine. Yeah. Capped. Perfect. That works for me. Um, Andrew Peak is the interesting one. Uh, again, 6'3". He adds size on the back end. I, I, I said this to you before. i got to be honest. Haven't watched a ton of Andrew Peak. Yeah. Uh, have, have not been an avid Andrew Peak watcher. Now I guess I'll have to be. Um you know, the stats aren't great. He's only played 23 games this year. Um, you know, kind of on a not so great contract for what he's given you. The Bruins must feel there's something more there because they gave up. a. Tw I know it's a couple years away, but a 2027 third is not small potatoes. Like that's that's a legitimate piece to give up, especially at this deadline where guys were not getting proper value. I mean, we saw it with Jake Gensel. You've seen it all around league to Foley. I don't think he even went for a first round pick and he's a 30 goal scorer. Um, I know he's a pending UFA, but still, uh, so I go back to peak. I mean, they must really think there's something there because let me tell you, if that deal doesn't work out, right. If peak does not work out here, if he's clearly, you know, if he goes like the Derek Forbert route, that's going to be a big strike against the front office. I know it's a 2027 third, but I've been saying this all along. You want to keep your picks, um, unless it's for something long-term, they must feel they have to feel. Like, this is a guy who's going to help them, you know, the next two years for sure, and maybe even longer. I mean, he is a former second-round pick. I know it was 2016, but uh, he has the size. Um, he was drafted high at one point. You know, they didn't draft him the second round because they thought he was going to be, a, you know, a shutdown guy. We saw yeah. with Sean Cohane last year at Dexter. Um, you know, big 6'4", good skater. He was picked in the sixth round. Um, you know, they must have thought Peak had more at the time. So I'm curious if if they think, and again, we'll hear from Sweeney, uh, I think later today, um, or we usually do. Uh, and again, we'll see kind of, they must have bigger plans for him or higher expectations because again, to take on the full cap hit of 2.75 and give up a third is a steep-ish price for a team that's cap constrained and draft pick constrained, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Uh and you know, as we were talking before, uh, before this, um, you know, I wonder if 
you know, I, I think the Bruins pro scouting uh, staff does a great job. And I, I wonder if, uh, you know, um, Adam McQuaid's uh, job description doesn't include pro scouting as far as I know. But I wonder if maybe, you know, Adam took a look at this kid and said, you know what, that's someone we can – there's untapped potential there. We could do something with that. Uh, now, Adam's not, uh, you know, he's a player development guy. He's not on the ice with the NHL team, uh, you know, instructing Charlie McAvoy on his pivots. He's down in Providence working with the kids down here. But still, his opinion matters, and I yeah. think he's he's a good judge of, uh, of players. And I wonder if, and, you know, I, again, I'm – I'm kind of making this up because I have no evidence that this is true, but I wonder if he We love making things up. Yeah, we do. Where would we be without it? Uh, but I wonder if he he weighed in on this and maybe Dennis Bonvey, you know, heads pro scouting, guys like that, uh, whether they see this kid and see, you know, untapped potential there. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe – uh, Sweeney will address this uh, when he when he meets the media, but uh, you know the other thing with getting back to Maroon for a second, um, you know maybe this, you know in the room it's it's just a little, a little bit of a jolt to the room. Like okay, this guy is here now. This is a guy we've gone to battle against for the past mm-hmm. several years. You know, including in the Stanley Cup Finals that year, uh, you know, the uh, 2019. But this is a little, maybe a little jolt to the uh, the status quo in the room. Uh, yeah. You know, and maybe it just ch- changes things up just a little bit. You know, Pat Maroon's a positive guy, a fun-loving guy, you know, great sense of humor. Maybe it just that little change that kind of, you know, just gives them a little jolt in the right direction. I wonder if, if that will turn out to be the case, uh, you know, as far as he's concerned. I agree with you again, the wit, you know, we love to make fun of the, the big physical guys and this and that, but I think there is a place, especially on a team like the Bruins who, you know, let's face it, their fourth line hasn't come to form yet. I like Brazo. Um, in that role, I think he's been solid. Uh, I've liked Richard when he was up here. I liked him. Boquist has given you something down there uh, yeah. in the last, you know, ten games or so. So I think that's encouraging. Um, but I, you know, I don't expect them to have a fully formed fourth line even when Maroon returns uh, at the end of March. So you're going to have, you know, when Maroon does return at the end of this month, you're going to have a couple weeks to see if Maroon can kind of get back in the flow. Um, of things on that fourth line. I know it's not ideal with him not, you know, being able to play, you know, like tomorrow. Um, but I still, I like the move. I do. It. Uh, you needed that. You need kind of the big physical guy who can, you know, do his thing out there. I mean, he's not going to yeah. give you a lot of offense, but I mean, you remember, I mean, this is old timey. I sound you know old timey here, but like in 2011, when Sean Thornton came back in the lineup for game three, what that yeah. did. Um, yeah. I think it's important, and and as uh, SRR Servant uh, says here, veteran experience is important. It's true. You know, like Maroon beat you in 2019 uh, yep. with the Cup, and yep. he, when he won two more. So, uh, I, you know, again, I'm fine with the move. They didn't give up a ton. Um, and, I, I, you know, I agree with the sentiment of, you know, again, I, bad stuff still happens on the ice. Even when Ryan Reeves was on the ice last night for Toronto, the, you know, Mason Lowry was still grabbing guys and doing his thing, which is great. Um, so it doesn't end things, but I think it does provide a little fear here and there. Um, and I just think the, the for the room, I think it's really important. Because, again, you know, you Marchand is a terrific captain. We, we agree on that. But you, you still lost Bergeron and Krejci in the offseason. Getting a veteran leader in that locker room or another one is not a bad thing. Um, so, and he also lost Nick Felino too. So, I think that that's uh, you know going to be key for them moving forward. By the way, we have the uh, w- real quick. We have the um, the hurdle blockbuster, uh, a first in twenty twenty five. David Edstrom, who was Vegas's first in twenty twenty three, I think they're retaining seventeen percent of hurdles. Uh, cap it. I think the, the sharks are. 
And then a third in 2025 and a third in 2027. Um, I don't know enough about David uh, Edstrom. Um, and then Frank Saravalli just tweeted, fascinating day for the Bruins. Sounds like they had a deal on the table to move Linus Olmark to the Kings that didn't end up crossing the finish line. All right. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. I want to dive into this. Uh, but first, a quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community every week. And Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. As the Bruins march towards the postseason, it's the perfect time to make your Bruins picks. Are you feeling David Pasternak shooting the puck a lot coming up? Brad Marchand scoring a lot of goals? Use your knowledge. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So, uh, again, I'm looking at that Frank tweet. Now, I had kind of pinned the Kings as a team that would make sense for Olmark uh, in terms of, uh, you know, um, they need a goalie. They have, yeah. I believe they have first round picks the next two years. Um, now I saw someone, I don't know who it was. I, I don't know how reputable they were, so I don't want to spread stupid stuff, but they had mentioned, I think late last night or early, early this morning, um, they'd mentioned something about um, Olmark to the Kings and the King, the Bruins were kicking tires on Dubois. Um, which I, yeah, P.L. Dubois, mm -hmm. I don't know about that one. I'm <laughs> the biggest fan of that. <laughs> um, but they do have those two first. And I remember Fluto Shinzawa wrote this week about, he talked with an NHL executive, I believe, uh, who'd mentioned that Olmark would most likely be going for futures. You would, you know, you would deal Olmark and get picks. The Kings have those. The Kings have those. Uh, now, Kevin Weeks had tweeted earlier today, Friday, uh, saying that you know the Bruins had something in place with Olmark, but he nixed it because of the geographic location. I mean, maybe he doesn't want to go to LA. I don't know. I mean, LA seems like kind of a good destination to go play in. I don't know. I don't know many players who don't want to go play in Southern California. Well, who, the guy from Sweden doesn't want to go play in LA. I, I don't know. I, I, that would surprise me. That's his. Um, I guess that's his right. He gets the right to do that. Um, I wonder the Olmark stuff is interesting because now it's been so public, right? Um, about you know him wanting to be or not wanting, but the Bruins looking at him uh, as a trade tart or someone to trade, and you know, a I mean, what would they have gotten is the first question. B Why did it you know not cross the finish line? Was it that Olmark didn't want to go to L.A. and C Is he now pissed like? You know, I think that's a valid question. I know he's been involved in trade rumors now for like a year. They were kind of just rumors last year, although uh, I had heard that they did try to trade him last yeah. offseason. Yeah. Um, that was something I did hear. Um, but, you know, I, that wasn't super public. You know, it was kind of just people being like, oh, could they trade him? Will they trade him? Whatever. Um, now well, it was, it's on, it on the Pittsburgh. table. It was Pittsburgh, wasn't it? I didn't hear. Well, I didn't hear. I didn't hear a team, but I just heard that they had tried to trade him. So I, I mean, you'd probably hear more than me. Um, but I had heard that they tried to trade him last summer. So, well, I don't know. So when does his his so his no trade expands at some point or kicks I, in? I, I saw Ty Anderson tweet uh, that it went from. Uh, it goes from his no trade. So not going to get easier in the summer. If it's somewhere, he simply doesn't want to go. His no trade list goes from 16 teams to 15 teams. Um, so it goes down one, I guess. Um, all right. Well, but, I mean, is he pit? Like, I wonder what his reaction to all this is. I mean, I know it's a business. Every players always say it's a business, but I, I'm just curious what, like, what, what, how's he going to respond to this? Is he, is he going to want a heater? Is he not going to want to play here anymore? 
I, I doubt it's the latter. I doubt that he's going to not yeah. want to play here. Um, but you know, I'm just curious how the the fallout from this. Well, that's a it's that's a fair uh, a fair point. I mean, you know, but uh, you know, with the playoffs looming here, uh, you know, he really doesn't. Does he have any other choice but to uh, you know put on his big boy pants and and play and and do well so that you know. Uh, he earns that that salary that they're paying him. I mean, you know, getting pissed and going in the tank doesn't help anybody. Uh, no, getting Especially pissed him. and using it as fuel to play well. Well, you know, that's something different. Uh, but I guess uh, I don't know. What does an angry Linus Olmark look like? I I can't <laughs> imagine it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited yeah, to see. Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of what that trade would have looked like, I mean. I don't know, maybe Dubois in that, but you'd still have to make the money work. Um, and I just, I can't imagine you'd want to bring him in that room. Like with that contract, that would be mass. I mean, that's a huge seismic move. I would have, I guess I would have assumed, you know, going off what Fluto reported this week, that it would have been for one of those firsts. Um, and I know that goalies don't typically get a ton at the deadline. It's hard to move goalies. I've heard all that. You're talking about a guy with a very palatable contract, just won the Vesna, really good goalie, relatively young. Like I'd be, you know, I, I would be shocked if it came in less than a first. So I would assume in that trade there would be like a first for the Kings or something. Well, and and you know, a massive upgrade for the Kings over Cam Talbot, massive upgrade. Uh, yes, so this uh, will be a lot of incentive for them. Yeah. Well, and a first rounder for them would be what, like in the middle of the first round at this point? Are they in I the would playoff? Say so. Are they in the playoff picture as of now? I think they're right on the edge. Aren't they? I can check. I think they're like a wild card team, or they're right outside. Um, they are. They are the third team in the Pacific, but they have seventy five points. Vegas has seventy three. They just added all those players. Okay, so and Nashville has seventy five. So maybe it's not that high. Maybe it's a pick in the twenty somewhere. Uh, Still a first. Yeah, in a good in a good draft this year, uh, so the experts tell me. Uh, <laughs> it's okay for but, New England. New England draft isn't kids from New England aren't bad this year. So right, right. Trade up and get Ben Merrill. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, and and so this is this is why it's very interesting <laughs> to me with this Olmark stuff because he is your most valuable asset. You have a number yeah. one legit number one goalie. Yep. Um, and in a, in a market where you have teams like the Kings, the devils who wanted a, goal, a goalies, um, you're hoarding two, <laughs> you have two legit starters and one on very good money. We're waiting on kind of, you know, uh, there's been rumors about an extension for Swayman for a couple of days. We'll see what ends up happening. I'm surprised we haven't heard more about that. Um, you know, again, Don Sweeney is supposed to, to speak at approximately 3 p.m. It's 3.23. I haven't seen any quotes tweeted out from uh, from reporters there, so I don't quite know uh, if he's gone on the podium yet. Don't those um, things have Don't those things have a history of starting late on trade deadline day? Crazy, right? isn't that wild? Yeah. Uh, you, you'd never expect it. Um, again, I you know, I I, I got to pull up the cap friendly in front of me, but. Um, you know, I would think that they would need to – again, we mentioned, you know, with the with acquiring Peaks uh, money, you would need to acquire – I mean, you would need to do another move, like move forward to LTIR or something like that so that, you know, you can fit the money in. Um, but, I mean, you know, we'll see. I, I'm curious what Sweeney says about Omar. I can't imagine they're going to talk too much about it just given that it didn't happen. I think they're going to probably go the more, you know, hey, it's – we're, you know, we're happy that he's here and – uh, by the way, the other player that Vegas got was Anthony Mantha. I forgot about that. Um, Mantha was earlier this week that uh, that Vegas got. Um, so thankfully, Vegas isn't in the East because that would be unfortunate for the Bruins. And you'd have Cassidy there too. Um, I saw a tweet today that's or a tweet the other day by someone. I forget who it was, so I'm sorry I can't give credit. Uh, but it was like, uh, imagine three years ago you learned that Bruce Cassidy is coaching Jack Eichel and Noah Hannafin, and it's not with the Bruins. So I got a good kick out kick out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, the Olmark stuff is fascinating to me. Um, and you know, this pretty much, I think 
makes it obvious they're going to deal him in the off season. I would, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, to to not to be in the position they're in now in terms of you know the lack of prospects, the the cap uh, cap concerns. I mean, to not deal one of them and uh, him. At this point, is is you know that's not a good uh, that's not good asset management. You uh, they've got to do something uh, you know to to kind of free up you know bring in some prospects or or establish players if you can pull it off that way. But you know having two uh, two number one goalies here, uh, it, it's too too much invested in net and not enough in other areas that you know in some cases are crying out you know, needs that are crying out to be filled. So mm-hmm. yeah, you gotta, you gotta trade them. You gotta trade them. Yeah. Um, Matt Porter reported about 16 minutes ago. Uh, Bruins will LTIR for to become cap compliant per source. Also coming one more minor piece of business that is not a trade. Um, so, you know, is that an extension for DeBrusque? Is that an extension for Swayman? Um, well, getting back to DeBrusque for a second, you know, you wonder if, you know, being uh, a positive, uh, taking a positive approach here. Does does not trading him give him, you know, a, a little bit of a confidence boost to get him, mm-hmm. maybe to go off on a on a little heater here and, you know, start to see the puck go in for him more often than it has been. Uh, you know, I think uh, we can all agree that he has great shifts uh, from time. Shifts from time to time and games from time to time that make you say, you know, geez, this this guy's good. We ought to hang on to him. Uh, and then the flip side is games where you know nothing happens and and there's not a lot going on. Does this not trading him at the deadline give him a little boost? You know, to think that okay, I'm at least going to finish the season out here and we'll see what happens. You know. I guess you can hope that that's the case, that that it works in that way, you know, in, in his favor. What's interesting is, you know damn well, you and I are going to be at some rinks. Maybe this fall it'll come out where we'll hear from people like, yeah, you know, DeBrus was going to be shipped to uh, so this place and they were going to get back these yeah. two pieces. And My and, buddy <laughs> told me, yeah, this is what, you know, his buddy told him that this is what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I want to I want to dive into the DeBrusque threesome trade uh, that was rumored to be for the last couple of days. Uh, so the trade was going to be based around um, Jake Gensel going to Vancouver, Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, oh my God, Lindholm going to Boston and DeBrusque going to Pittsburgh. So you gotta you know I don't have a diagram, but you know boom 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 different parts of the map, all that stuff. Um, so essentially, the Bruins would trade DeBrusque and get Elias Lindholm. Um, and for those who don't know, Lindholm has not fit well in Vancouver. I believe he's been like their third line center behind Pedersen and Miller. Um, production hasn't really been there. I think Rutherford, re- uh, you know, initially wanted to look to flip that for a piece that could make more sense. Um, Canucks are done for the day, according to one of the insiders I just saw on Twitter. Um, so that obviously isn't going to happen. They also didn't sign Phil Kessel. That's very sad. Um, but that trade, we talked about this before we came on. I would have been for it. Um, you know, again, you're probably more likely to re-sign Elias Lindholm than you are Jake DeBrusque. Um, you know, I-, I think Lindholm feels more of a need. I know that things have not worked out great in Vancouver, but that the essence of his of the player is still there. You know, yeah. like yeah. borderline number one center. Um, yeah, his stock has taken a little bit of a hit too. So like. Maybe you don't sign him to as big a deal um, or an extension as you maybe would have prior to him uh, going to Vancouver. Um, good defensively, like the essence of kind of a Bruin. So that obviously isn't going to happen now. Um, but what did you think of that? Well, I, I would have been in favor of it. You know, I, I wonder if if it was a straight three for three or whether there were other moving parts, uh, you know, going here and there you know, with the other teams, but, uh, yeah, it would have filled, you know, it would have filled a knee at center. He, he would have, uh, 
in theory, he would be your number one center, right? You know, mm -hmm. maybe he's not a classic number one center in the. He at least know. is going to win draws at the end of games in the D zone and stuff like that. That they've he, kind of been better. Missing. He's better than what you have, probably. Yeah. So, uh, no, he's not Connor McDavid. And, you know, he's not uh, on that level, obviously, but he's better than what you have. And uh, you get something for DeBrusque who. I can't see them signing for another. You know, I can't see a long-term big money contract for him from the Bruins just based on, you know, his inconsistency and all those things we've talked about over the last few weeks. So I would have, uh, I would think that that would have been a good deal for the Bruins. It would have. And I, I am curious. So now you look at this Bruins team and they've added Maroon and Peak. Uh, they don't trade DeBrusque. They don't end up trading Linus Olmark. Um, so now, I mean, again, I'm okay with them not trading Linus Olmark uh, at this time. Again, if you were going to get two firsts from LA and a, you know, a depth defense or something, like, okay, fine, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, but if it was going to be like Dubois <laughs> or you know something like that, I don't know. I you know, again, their strength is they have two legitimate starting netminders who you can put in a playoff series in yeah. and out. And I am, ex I want to see them do it again. I've said this a thousand times. I'm not saying they're going to win the cup because of it, but I want to see it. I, they've done it for two years. They should have done it last year. They didn't. I want to see it happen. I, I do. That's, you know, I want to see it. It's a position of strength. Um, a lot of teams around the East now have bulked up offensively. Um, you know, Carolina, Florida, Tampa, uh, you now are bigger. You're a little deeper up front. You're a little deeper in back. You keep your goalie tandem together. Um, you know, I think for them, it's sort of, let's see what happens. Now, the question is, if they're out in the first round, right? Yeah. If they're out in the first round, was keeping DeBrusque worth it? I think that's the biggest thing, right? Like, if, if they yeah. can go on yeah. a little run, then it makes sense. And, you know, then he leaves. Okay, we got, we got out of here. But if they're out in the first round and he's got two points in six games or something, then we're going to be looking back at this and going, you you yeah. could have you probably could have dealt them for something, right? No, no question. Uh, that'll be tough to swallow. No question about it. But if they beat Toronto in the first round and they move on to the second round, well, okay. I feel like you're kind of playing with house money at that point because yeah. as we've as we've uh, we've said over and over again these last few weeks, this is not a, in my eyes. This is not a cup contending team. It's mm. not. There's there's holes. It isn't unfilled holes. Uh, you know th that uh, that are gonna that are gonna come back to uh, to haunt you when uh, in the playoffs when you face really really good teams instead of you know some bad teams that you face in the regular season in the NHL. But uh, you know I don't think investing you know, in this group, uh, they should be looking at two years, three years, four years down the road. What kind of team are they going to have then? You know, rather than we're going to, we're out to win the cup this year. Well, they were out to win the cup last year. Kudos to them for, uh, for, for going all in and, and going for it. It didn't work. It blew up in their face, you know, but, uh, but at least they tried, right? They tried. Like that was, they tried. Right, they tried. So, you know, not they they didn't uh, at this deadline. They didn't, you know, they didn't trade any uh, any uh, pieces that that are going to be uh, you know help them uh, you know be a, a contender again in a few years. Uh, so you know, moves around the margins, and and we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Uh, they still. You know, teams did this, and Carolina and Florida's a powerhouse at this point. Uh, but the Bruins still have better goaltending than 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 any of them. Uh, Agreed. You know, you know, Florida, Bobrovsky is capable of. You know, we saw what he was capable of last year, so he's right there. With, he's right there with uh, with Swayman and uh, and Allmark. But you know, some of the other teams. Boston's goaltending is better. So we'll see where it gets them uh, this time. Uh, but if they can beat, say they beat Toronto in the first round, they they 
Which I would pick them. I would pick them in a Toronto series. Yeah, I would too. And and then give somebody a good battle in the second round. Maybe they win, maybe they don't. Well, you know, I would declare that a success and uh, and move on to, uh, you know, the 101st season of Bruins hockey next year. (laughs) I also think like if let's, okay, so let's play the playoff game, right? Bruins beat the Leafs in the first round. We both agree on that, right? Then they go play probably Florida. Um, or maybe it's Tampa if, you know, if Tampa is the second wild card and they beat Florida or however it ends up working. Right. Let's, let's say it's Florida. Yeah. Bruins are pissed about last year. Goalie tandem. If they've already won around with it is probably working. Um, Bruins almost beat them last year with a much better roster than they a better lineup than they have this year, but still right. Pissed from last year. It's a close series. It's not, you know, I don't know who I pick. I'd have to dive deeper. Um, but you know it's still close. It wouldn't be crazy for the Bruins to win that series. Yeah. Um, you have the goaltending. You should have the defense. By the way, uh, if Lindholm comes back, right? Yep. Lindholm should be better. You should expect more from Hampus Lindholm. You know, I'm not saying he's good, but you, for what he's making and for what his role is, he should be giving you more. Carlo's been solid. McAvoy's been solid. Uh, they also they also keep Grizzlick. Grizzlick does not move at this deadline. Um, yeah. So Matt Grizzlick is still a Bruin. You know, does he is he playing better because peace of mind he knows he's here. Um, so you know, now you've got Peak back there, Watherspoon, who also got a little extension today, which congratulations to him. Very well deserved. One year, eight hundred thousand dollars. Awesome for him. Forbert's been bad, but you know, does he turn it around by the playoffs? Again, I'm just this best case scenario, but defensively, uh, physicality wise, um, Bruins are bigger today. And they should be for the playoffs. The goalie tandem stays intact. Um, now the peak deal again, as I said at the top of this show, for those who are kind of just j- trickling in, um, it will look like a steal if Peak ends up, you know, <laughs> becoming a top four fixture and he's great and you know there's potential there that they unlock. It will look very bad though if that isn't the case. If he, if he, you know, doesn't really find his game and suddenly you have two point seven five on the books and you give up a third for him, I think that's where it starts to stink. Yeah, and it, so he's a righty D, you know, when when uh, they acquired a righty D a couple of years ago named Josh Brown, who I'm sure uh, you uh, you remember. And Oh, yeah, do I he's, ever. He's not Josh Brown. Uh, no. Or he better <laughs> Thankfully. not. Thankfully. He better, <laughs> better not. not be Josh Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, the, the D is, uh, is stouter. Uh, and forward, yeah, let's, you know, his struggles have been well documented. Uh, but, you know, what is his injury? Is is this something that's, is this contributing to his, uh, his poor play? Or, you know, what's going on with him? And is there hope that if he's healthy, if he can get healthy, that he can raise his game and get back to doing some of the things that made him you know, a somewhat valuable player for them. These like maybe not this year, but or at least, you know, I know he's been hurt a lot this year. But you know, can he get back to the point where he's a contributor? Maybe not every night. Maybe this gives them a little bit of a luxury of, you know, he doesn't play every night. They don't need him to be in the top six every single game. They can, they can rotate him in as needed if they need something. Uh, that he can give them. Maybe there's hope for him, you know, giving them something in this, uh, this postseason. I don't know. I was, re- this is going to sound awful. I was reading Twitter. Who are you talking about? Forbert. 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 Yes. Yes. Sorry. I was reading through, um, there's a uh, Puckpedia reported that, uh, the Bruins have sent down, this was 18 minutes ago, sent down Brazo and low Rye. That still leaves them 207, 207- Fifteen thousand short of cap space. One more move to come. Maybe that's forward to the LTIR, and that makes yeah. it work. Um, so again, I agree with you on Forbert. Um, you hope that you can somehow find something there with him. I guess this is the Bruins' version of uh, circumventing the cap. Vegas puts like their star players in the LTIR. The Bruins like we'll put Derek Forbert down there for a little bit of time to accommodate uh, Andrew Peak. Why not? Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting deadline. I'm happy that they didn't, you know, 
there are holes on this team. Top six, you could use another left shot, top four defenseman. We get that. You weren't, you didn't have the assets to get both. You didn't have the assets to really even get one at yeah, this right. deadline. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm happy on the one hand that they didn't just recklessly start throwing draft picks around. Again, the jury is out on the peak pick. I mean, I, I, you know, a lot of people, myself included, sort of saw that and said, what the hell? Um, but I think time will tell on that. If peak stinks, then we'll look back and say, okay, that was a little bit, you know, that was a miss. But at least, I mean, they're trying to get these diamonds in the rough. I give them, you know, th- someone on the player development staff or more uh, in, the, in the pro scouting unit must like him. So, yeah, you know, I'll take their well, word for it, it on that. Well, you know, uh, it's all proven otherwise. I haven't seen enough of Andrew Peak. I haven't seen Jamie Langenbrunner around Providence as much uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Whereas in, in years past, he's been, been here quite often, you know, in his development role. But uh, I believe he's been doing more pro scouting this year. So he's another one who may may have weighed in on Andrew Peake. And, I, you know, I think Jamie is uh, just an unbelievable judge of talent. Uh, and I wonder if he – what if any role he may have played in uh, in in Andrew Peak? Um, you know, we just don't know. Maybe we'll find out. The Bruins are very. I found them to be very hesitant in uh, claiming. Like, if you say to somebody, "Oh, was that you? Did, can can I give you credit for this move?" <laughs> they will inevitably say, "Oh, no, no. It's a collaboration. It's a, we work together." So. If I were to say, uh, you know, Jamie deserves the credit or uh, Dennis Bonby deserves the credit, you know, I would probably be told in short order, no, 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 it's a collaboration. We all work together. So, you know, who knows who uh, who really had input here? But uh, I trust those guys' judgment. I think uh, I think they do a good job uh, in what they do. So. Yeah, um, I saw a funny tweet. Someone quote tweeted uh, the Kevin Weeks report and said, quote, geography equals more than five feet away from Jeremy Swayman uh, for Omar nixing a trade. Yeah, he won't a, go away from Swayman, good one. which I, I like. Um, Sweeney's set to speak to the media um, in a couple minutes. Um, we'll see if that, you know, we'll see if that stays on time. For those listening live, you know, you're watching us live. For those listening after, you're like, oh, he's speaking in five minutes from now on. You know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. No, we're, we're talking Friday, March 8th. This is live. Um, this is not – a lot of times these podcasts go out on Twitter and people – I'll be with her like, how are you live on there and like right here doing something else? And I'm like, well, that's it's live. Like it's playing for the first time on Twitter, but we recorded this like a day ago. This is fully live. This is like, you know, I don't have a thing with the date on it, but like – We're working without a live. We're working without a net here. You know, we are, <laughs> we are, yeah. we're, we're, on, we're, we're, that's exactly what this is. Um, so again, Bruins acquire Pat Maroon. They get Andrew peak. Uh, they don't trade to brusque. They don't trade Olmark. They don't, you know, they don't sell at all. You know, um, I know there were some who felt that, uh, this team was not good enough. So trade, you know, all, you know, trade Van Riemsdyk, Grizzlick, Forbert, um, you know, again, n- nothing came to fruition. Again, the closest thing was that Olmark thing, which I want to circle back to because I just I find that to be fascinating with well, LA. One fa- very fascinating aspect of that is, you know, if if say Pierre Luc Dubois was part of that somehow, mm-hmm. and I don't know how that would work—a first rounder and him for Olmark and what else? I I don't know. Who knows? But. Uh, Putting a guy like him in the Bruins room, now that would be interesting. That would be it. I'd, I'd want to be down there every day again if yeah. that was the case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because let's face it, he's, you know, his reputation precedes him in terms of, you know, kind of being a malcontent. Uh, it, you know, a guy who, you know, forced his way out of uh, Columbus. You know, I forget the circumstances in Winnipeg, but, you know, it seemed like he somehow, uh, you know, ends up in L.A. For a guy with his pedigree and and, and his talent 
to be on uh what's his this is third team now that's a lot of that's a lot of stops in a pretty short time so you know where there's smoke there's fire there's something about him that uh you know isn't uh you know rubs people the wrong way i don't know maybe he's just one of those people (laughs) i don't know Well, you know is is he like the anthony rendon of hockey you know, like Anthony Rendon yeah. with the Nationals kind of being like, I, I don't know how say. again, I don't know much about P, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois outside of kind of what's out there. Um, I've never covered him. So, again, I can't like speculate. But, again, Columbus, Winnipeg, uh, L.A. This year, again, like on the Kings points-wise, you know, I'll stop when I get to Dubois at the point, you know, uh, yeah. Fiala, Kopitar, Kempe, Byfield, Moore, Doughty, Deneau, Dubois. Um yeah, I mean, points in 62 games plus minus is very debatable. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Minus 18. Um, wow. No, no one on the Kings is, is even close to minus 18. The closest is Laferriere with minus 12. After that, it's like minus two, minus four. Um, so that's, that's crazy. And I know when he was here, I, you know, I was not impressed with his, you know, at work ethic and things like yeah. that. So, you know, I would not have been the biggest fan if Dubois was the thing coming back in that Olmark trade. I in if he's going to L, if Olmark's going to LA, because this is something again we you know could still happen in the off season. Um, you know, is it going to? I'm if it's for draft picks, if it's for a first or something along those lines, I'm okay with that. Now yeah. I get why they didn't do it. You know, I I get if it was first round picks, I would understand why they wouldn't do it now because you need Olmark for the playoffs and you know the position you're in. It's hard to justify all those firsts right now. You'd have to basically come out and say like, yeah, we're okay, but we don't think we're that great. Um, but, you know, again, I, I they're they're better. They're a better team than they were yesterday. I'll give them that. You know, I mean, I, yep. I think they are. And they didn't give up a ton future-wise. So, I mean, again, like time will tell on this deadline. If they win the cup, it's an A+. Plus. If they're out in the first round, we're second guessing a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're second guessing more the DeBrusque thing than anything if they don't go on a run. I don't think, like, they didn't give up a ton for Maroon. Like, I give you an A for effort there. You try, you know. Yeah. Peak yeah. is different. I think a little more time is going to be needed with that. Um, so well, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, the the door closes now on the the Jakobs of Oral era. Uh, That's right. That's right. You know, and, and, you know, I don't know if I have the words to describe how bad he's been in Providence this year. I mean, he's been awful to the point where, you know, he's, he's not in the lineup a lot. Like if they're in a three on three, three and three on a weekend, he, there was somewhere he played one game, one out of the three, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, he just hasn't been good. Uh, you know, and I, I kind of feel sorry for him because he's a, he's a nice kid, uh, but his confidence was always confidence was always an issue with him from day one, what from twenty fifteen. Uh, you know, and God forbid I mention that date, but uh, I mean, I think the coaching staff in Boston was was done with him. They lost faith in him last year. You know, the fact that he never played in a season when they were running away with everything and -hmm. they never put him in there just to kind of try and get him back on track maybe and and get something out of him, they were just like, we're done with him. We're done with him. Uh, So we won't have him to kick around anymore. Uh, You know, Jake's the last man standing. Zach- <laughs> he is. He wins. Jake DeBrusk. Zach- Zach's edition's gone. Uh, Zavoral's gone. And, and now it's down to Jake. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. I, and he uh, was almost gone. He's he was almost, he was gone, yeah. almost gone. The specter uh, of 2015 will live on forever, but the, there's only one actual person, uh, player left from then, from that draft. So from the first round, yeah, from the first, from the first round. round. Yeah. Um, speaking of first round picks, Steven Ellis from uh daily face off tweeted out, uh, Vegas's first round picks since starting, uh, 2018, they made three, all three were traded. 
2019 was Peyton Krebs traded. 2020 was Brennan Brisson. They still have 2021 Zach Dean traded. 2022 pick was traded before they made it. 2023 pick David Edstrom now been traded. Uh, 2024 they still have that pick. They will make a first round pick this year. Isn't that wild? They added Noah Hannafin, Mantha, and Tomas Hurdle at the deadline, and they will make a first round pick this year. That is miraculous. They won't, however, make first round picks the next two years in 25 and 26. They will not make first round picks then. Um, wow. But they, I mean, they go for it. Like they go big. I give them credit. Like they go balls to the wall well, every it's a, year. It's the classic uh, Vegas philosophy, right? They're, uh, yep. They're uh, they're all in every year. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing approach. Uh, approach, and you know, it's got. Uh, so they're picking. They're they're using their pick this year, unless they trade it. You know, between now and the, you know before the draft or whatever. But it could be the the thirty second pick. So it's practically a second rounder as it is. So why not? It's working for them. You get you got to. Uh, Got to give them credit, uh, and they work in the system, you know, as as everyone else is free to do, but but doesn't for whatever reason. They're working it, and and it's uh, it's paying off. So good for them. A little piece of news: Forbert indeed on LTIR, according to Sweeney, um, he needs surgery, maybe two surgeries. Um, so that's so there you sizable. go. Um, so again, I. Wouldn't be shocked to see Forbert done for the rest of the year. Maybe that isn't just circumventing the cap. Maybe, maybe there is something really there. Um, so that is something legitimate. I'm curious. Uh, to, I'm curious to see to hear what the what the injury is. You know, did they say it was upper body? I, I can't remember. I don't remember. Uh, nothing was said here. I don't think. Um, one other quote: uh, Sweeney said, "We felt comfortable with how our team play. Our team in the last three games has played." Felt they added playoff tough depth. That's kind of what we said, right? Like, yeah. you know, I have not been impressed with them over the last month. I know they've been good over the last week. Um, I don't know if you were going to add, <laughs> you weren't going to add a top uh, six center. You probably weren't going to be able to add, you know, a, a, you know, a top four left shot defenseman too. So they add, they add toughness. They add playoff depth. Like, you know, this is sort of what they, I remember what they did with like, 2015 and 2016. Now they're in a much better playoff position than they were then. Um, I think the two goalies kind of keep you in amongst this. I'm hoping someone asks about Olmark because um, I think that's kind of what everyone's uh, waiting for, especially on uh, DeBrusque. Um, and according to Sweeney, Forbert's season is most likely over. Uh, so okay. So that's something else that's so much for getting anything uh, positive out of him the rest of the way. I know. Tried to come back, but I mean, looked awful in those games. I'm not surprised that he's, you know, he's well, uh, and you know, not to, he, he doesn't need uh, me to defend him, but when it's a physical thing, it's different. I, I think, than uh, oh, he just sucks, which is, yes, you know, is the uh, the point of view of you know, a lot of the ignorant portions of the fan base. Oh, he just sucks. Well, if he's hurt and he's not a hundred percent, well, then that's not the same as a guy who's just not very good, you know. So, yeah, we, I mean, I think all we know. Again, I think Forbert in a perfect world is a third pairing left shot defenseman when fully healthy, who exactly. can kill penalties and and uh, play physical. So again, I, you know, so his season's done. So again, like you know, your top four right now with low rise sent down is lit uh well Lindholm's out right now too but I know he was skating normally yesterday but when the playoffs start right let's say when the playoffs start Lindholm McAvoy uh or Grizzly McAvoy Lindholm Carlo and then you know you have Peak you have Shattenkirk you have Watherspoon um you know you have Lowry in the system uh, I would assume Lowry would get you know chances at least in the postseason I don't know if he's in there every night just because of the defensive stuff. But I mean, he looked, we were saying before we came on, he looked outstanding last night um, offensively. I mean, my God, the skill that kid has uh, the yeah. aggressiveness. He almost scored again. Like there's a lot of offensive potential there. If those pucks start going in, if, you know, I think he passed it to Justin Brazo in front of the net. Maybe if it's a top six forward, that's a goal. And we're like, Holy crap. What a, what a pass by low uh, But the more that he starts producing, 
or those, you know, pucks go in that he's shooting or passing, um, the more he's in the lineup, even as a third pairing guy. So I think that, you know, I, I don't on paper that they're okay. I think they're okay on D, you know, I don't think they're in a terrible spot. No, I agree. And I wonder if there's a way that, you know, Brazo and Lorai mysteriously are on the roster Saturday. Um, you know, when they play Pittsburgh, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't do the salary cap. I, I leave that to, uh, the experts, much smarter than the experts. Yeah. Uh, of which there I'm, are not one of, I'm not one of those experts, by the way, which not there are many. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. I, I, uh, but Laura, I mean, when you see him uh, do things like like he did last night, you know it was only wasn't that long ago where he had ju- just that god awful game uh, I, in Edmonton, was it? He was just absolutely was. terrible, and you're going to have to live with that. in, in a, a a kid with a kid who uh, is a rookie and is kind of feeling his way, but when you see a, a performance like last night uh you know some of the flashes there are still times what was it was it uh monday night where he just fell down at one point <laughs> off the he was defending yes. a rush he was defending a rush and he just fell down you know it was like okay you gotta live with that you gotta live with that if you're gonna if you're gonna have him play here in, in uh in the stretch drive of of, of, a, of an nhl season a guy who you know has uh has some developing to do still then you're gonna have to live with those mistakes and uh that's how it is but it's been encouraging to see uh him uh you know the offensive side of his game emerging you know more and more uh in some games that's great to see i agree and i think again when those offensive chances go in that makes it more of an incentive to keep him in over others um Sweeney on the rumors of Olmark to LA. This is from Matt Porter on Twitter. I really like the tandem we have now. I'm happy we've stood pat there. Rumors are rumors. It's not coming from here. Um, so again, I mean, Frank Valley, I I believe. So I like and Weeks also has uh you know indicated that there was a deal there. He didn't I don't think Weeks said LA, but still like Weeks, you know, you have two insiders reporting it. I believe them. <laughs> I, I believe them. Um, so again, well, I don't think if, we talk much about rumors, but if you, uh, recall the, uh, the great newspaper movie, uh, all the president's men, uh, you know, when president Nixon denied that he was, you know, did what he did. And, uh, Ben Bradley said, well, that's a, that's a non-denial denial. So <laughs> he didn't say. Don didn't say that there wasn't something going with LA. All he said was those rumors are coming from here. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Thanks, Don. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, like you said, Frank Saravalli doesn't uh, doesn't have a reputation for unlike some in the media doesn't just make shit up. So I would say where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that clearly there was something there. Um, Trying to see if there's any other interesting tidbits uh, coming out of Sweeney's presser before we head off. Um, Because we've discussed, I mean, we, you know, Maroon, Peak, DeBrus, Grizzlick, Omark, the team where they stand going into the playoffs. Like, you know, I mean, I think what I'll ask you, like, for the final question, I'll ask you, like, and we've discussed this a little bit, but does this change how you view them going into the playoffs? Uh, in terms of how far they can go uh, or in terms of, can they make it all the way? You know, it hasn't changed. I don't think, uh, I don't think they'll, they're built for that this year. Um, but I think, uh, what they did do will help them get Pat, get through one round, I think. And maybe if things break their way, maybe, maybe two rounds, if they get, they get great goaltending and, you know, the things that, you know, the things you sometimes get in a, in a playoff run, uh, you know, a hot streak by a player like, uh, like say, Jake DeBrusque. Uh, maybe, 
maybe they can uh, they can uh, you know extend things a little bit. But in terms of their Stanley Cup chances, it doesn't change how I look at it, which is that they're they're not good enough uh, this year, and that uh, they should be looking two, three, four years down the road at at maybe putting together another team that can make more of a challenge than uh, than what they'll make this year. I agree. I don't see, I, I, you know, after today, I'm not like they are going to be in the Stanley cup. I think, you know, they had the roster as it was with the two goalies and, you know, just enough up front and who they have in back. I, you know, I see them winning around. They should win around. Um, but it wouldn't shock me if they're out in the first round and I don't see them. You know, I don't, I don't see them after the last month going all the way to the cup. Um, today doesn't change that, you know, I think you have more depth, you have more physicality, you know, maybe you don't get thrown around like you have in past and past playoff series, uh, especially like last year against Florida. Um, maybe you have something in Andrew peak, you know, maybe this is a guy that's a future, you know, guy that you're like, wow, that's a value add two, seven, five for what peak can give you. And maybe that's what you get. Um, but I can't sit here today and say, wow, they're such a better team. And I don't think they were aiming for that. I think they were, I think they're content with the group they have. I think they knew that they were not going to compete with all these other teams for all these um, higher end players like Gensel, and Lindholm and Hannafin and Toffoli and Duclair and all these guys. Yeah. Um, and I think they just kind of said, we're going to add depth, which is what I have said for a couple months now. Just do that. Yeah. You know, you're not, you don't have the assets. and. You know, the one big uh, thing was the 2027 third rounder, which again, like Lord knows where they'll be in a couple of years, um, what peak turns into, but no, I don't think it changes it, but they also didn't destroy, you know, they didn't give up a ton for a rental who's just going to be a third liner that, you know, it's like, what did you do that for? What's the point? So they didn't, they didn't, uh. Although I wouldn't have been opposed to it, they didn't trade, uh, you know, any of their uh, prospects, top prospects. Agreed. Um, Fabian Lysel, who you know, I've advocated for not hesitating to trade him in the right deal. He's still around, you know. Berkeloff is still around, uh, so you know we'll see. You still got those guys. How they pan out, we don't know. But yet, we don't know. But uh, you know, they're they're here. We'll see what happens with them. I'm curious what happens. Uh, interesting day in terms of the rumors. So now we can look forward to something this summer. Maybe old markets dealt. Maybe we got a little, you know, trade rumor city, which is always fun to do. Um, went an hour. Went over an hour doing this. Um, you know. Uh, Pete Blackburn and DJ Bean have been doing a, they did a 24 hour live stream. Um, they, they, they started like yesterday at three or four and I was, I watched them a little bit last night and then I checked it when I woke up this morning, I was like, let's see if they're still going. And they were, and they had a lot of viewers and they were somehow they were still cooking. I don't know what they did all night, but my God, those two stayed up with their producer and they've just been, cr- you know, cranking out content. So, uh, you know, we should go another, tw- why don't we go another 23 hours? You're comfortable. I'm in my chair. I got my water bottle right here. You know, might as well do 24 hours. Why not? Um, but my God. Well, anyways, Mark, this is always fun. This is just what we do at rinks. So it's like, well, now people get to watch it. So lucky them or maybe unlucky them. Um, but anyways, as always, Mark, thank you so much. Um, and to the, to the people who watch, people who will watch, to the people who listen, people who will listen. Thank you. Um, and that's been this episode of Bruins Beat. It's live and it's presented by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Make sure to go check them out. And that's that. That's this week's Bruins Beat. I'm Evan Marinovsky. You Bruins Beat listeners have a great rest of your week.